And we see Mr. Kyle Ruth over here with something on his arms. What are those? Uh, I got some BFR cuffs, some Bluetooth BFR cuffs. And what kind of protocols are you doing with them right now? Right now, I'm doing basically a max rep minus one or two strict handstand push-up and then two minutes of rest between with uh, my cuffs at about 50% of the max occlusion pressure. That's really complicated, but basically I'm cutting off blood flow between sets. But that's not what we're talking about today. Welcome to the new show. It's new show, it's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows, it's new show. This is November 2nd, TTT Compete. It's a Tuesday, three sets. B1 is going to be so that you would have an A in the TTT Compete path. And then B1 is going to be strict pull-ups. You're going to do an AMRAP unbroken set. So set one is going to be a pronated grip, which we'll show you when we get there. Set two will be supinated. Again, we'll show you when we get there. And then third will be a mixed grip. Once you do your first set, you'll rest exactly 30 seconds. Then you're going to go into an AMRAP, kipping knees to elbow, minus two. What this means is two away from failure. So that's going to be kind of subjective. But basically, you're thinking, OK, I'm about to fail, but I can do a couple more. That's where you'd stop, rest 30 seconds, into a 60-second AMRAP of rope climbs to 15 feet. When we get into the workout, I will talk about exactly why we're doing this and what this is training. Today, though, we have Kyle and Perrin that are going to demo it. Kyle's warming up by doing some kind of power clean deadlift. I'm not sure if that's going to work for his warm up, but we'll be back in a second to go over the workout. And hello there. Welcome back. All right, we have Kyle and Perrin, and they're going to be doing a nasty combo. So the first set is going to be pronated, unbroken, strict pull-ups, which we'll see in a second. Rest 30 seconds into unbroken minus two, or an AMRAP minus two, knees to elbow. Rest 30 seconds into 15-foot rope climb. So we're going to just talk about strategy real quick, kind of what the game plan is. Kyle, what's the goal with each of the movements, and especially the rope climbs? Um, my pulling, like my upper body pulling gymnastics isn't great, so I'm going to try to get around 10 strict pull-ups each time. I'm not sure that's possible. And then I don't really know what to do. I'm kipping knees to elbows. Like, it's just like a roll of the dice. We don't ever do that. <laughs> but it's hilarious that Perrin and I are the only ones that have done it so far. Like, we demoed it in the, the row down, and now yeah. we're demoing it again. Uh, and then the rope climbs, I'm going to try to do five every 60 seconds, but it's probably going to be four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, five is definitely fast, but, I mean, your rope climbs are pretty good. All right, Perrin? I, I don't know what my expectations are. I feel like I'm just going to try as hard as I can. How many, what's your max on broken strict pull-ups? I, I think it's under 20. Above 15? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that today. So one of the things that they have to do each set, they'll start pronated, which we're going to start in a second. And the second set is going to be supinated, so their palms will be facing them. And the third set, they're going to do a mixed grip. So they'll have it. Basically, I can't even demo it with the mic like this. But one's going to be pronated. One's going to be supinated. <laughs> do something like this as you're going. <laughs> they, they should have to switch halfway through. So what we're going to do, just so you can see the comparison, even if one of them does more... Uh, let's say that Kyle does 15 and she does 12, so she's off first. We're going to start the 30-second clock after Kyle finishes so that they can start each piece together, just so everyone can stay on the same clock and you guys can watch the differences in pull-ups, in knees to elbow, and in rope climbs. So I'm going to start the clock. We'll be back in two seconds. And we are back. We're going to start pronated grip. Unbroken strict pull-ups. While they're going, I'll talk about the reason behind all of this. Let's watch this first set, though, first and start. Again, this is just chin over the bar strict pull-up. So why are we doing this? What's the goal behind all of these movements? The pull-up is obviously to pre-fatigue for the rope climbs. The knees to elbow is also pre-fatigue, but in two different pathways. This is going to be upper body pulling, pre-fatigue the lats, pre-fatigue the grip, pre-fatigue the biceps. And then with the knees to elbow, that's going to be pre-fatigue the core. And so both of those are needed on the rope climb. You can think about this as doing the GHD and the rope climb in the quarterfinals last year where everyone was saying, oh, my goodness, my core was blown up. It was hard to get my legs all the way up to do rope climbs. So the cue for them on the rope climbs is going to be get your legs up, drive hard with your legs, and still have some upper body pulling endurance to be able to oh, – I'm dropping the, dropping the chalk bucket over here. Sorry, you didn't see it. All right, so they're starting what, – what time? All right, at the one-minute mark. My arms don't feel good. Five seconds. Three, two, 
one, and go. So this is AMRAP minus two knees to elbow. Again, we're trying to pre-fatigue the core, just like the GHD sit-ups in the quarterfinal last year, or even the pistols kind of pre-fatigue the hip flexors going back in the rope climb. So we're really trying to prep for that for those that are good at rope climbs, but then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, what happened to my core? I can't get my legs up in the rope climbs. That's what this is for. The knees to elbow is a tough movement. It really, for me, requires a ton of lumbar flexion to get my knees all the way up to my elbows. So she did 14, Perrin did 14. Kyle's still going strong. He looks really comfortable. What was the number? 20, so 14 and 20. We'll call it two minutes on the dot is when we'll start this next one. Just again, for ease of use. So I'm gonna start them at the same time. So this is set number one of the rope climbs and then we'll have a rest is needed time after this. Kyle's goal is to get five rope climbs. Perrin said she's really gonna just fill this first one out and then go from there on the set two and set three. All right. Five seconds, guys. I'm gonna call it out for him. Three, two, one, and go. So the cue here on this is really drive your knees up. That's what we're trying to do after the pre-fatigue of the knees to elbow. And then have a really aggressive foot drive down. Get a good lock and then press through with your legs so you're not using as much upper body as maybe you typically would on a rope climb. So those are kind of the things we're thinking about. They've both done two in 20 seconds. So technically we could get six but as we know, there is some deterioration in this movement. So again, three at the 26 second mark for Kyle. Perrin, you can see her grips uh, or just upper body pulling is going a little bit. Still really good, already three reps in for both of them, about the halfway mark. Kyle's rope almost nailed Perrin in the head. One of the things you gotta be careful with rope climbs. All right, Perrin, you can see he's struggling a little bit with the lock, 15 seconds left. Can she get up for a fourth one? She's definitely gonna be able to get there. And she may be wise not to do another one here because she'll be stuck halfway up the rope. Kyle did get to five, so that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna talk to them. This is rest is needed. So you're resting as long as needed to try to keep the same number of sets in the rope climb. So keep that in mind before you do this workout. Kyle, I know you're a little bit out of breath. You got your five. Got Where did you feel the most fatigue on the rope climb? Um, grip, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Anything in your core from the knees to elbow? Not yet. Felt fine? Yeah, they felt fine. Okay. Yeah. What, what about arm, like uh, lats, biceps? Uh, my lats are honestly sore from yesterday from doing the 1RM. <laughs> but uh, it was really just my grip that was like fairly fatigued. So I really tried to like compress myself. I don't know if I did. I was trying to, and then just use my legs to stand up more. This, I would have the same thing. I, my core really rarely fatigues, but my grip fatigues so fast, even doing one AMRAP set. So I feel Kyle's pain there with the grip. Was yours grip, biceps? I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard it, but Paris said, I'm in trouble. Um, all of it is really bad. Um, I almost failed my last rope climb, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to rest as needed. They both, just keep this in mind, that we're filming this ahead of time, or before you guys do it, obviously. So they just did a pulling workout yesterday from TDD Compete, and then we asked them, hey, by the way, we want you two to demo for next week's workout. So, of course, they're, they're here demoing after doing a bunch of rope climbs and upper body strict pulling yesterday. Uh, what time do you guys want to go? Um, I would say take some time. Let's... Yeah, I, at least. Let's go, let's go at the six minute mark. Yeah, let's go at the six minute mark. I know the tendency, this is a really good training uh, tip is probably the best way to put this. I know the tendency is to move through your training as quickly as possible, especially CrossFitters that are that type A, I wanna fill the pump, I wanna go as fast as I can. And there's a time and a place for that, especially when it says an AMRAP or five rounds for time. When it says sets like this and rest is needed, the goal for you is to be able to get the same amount of rope climbs each set so that we're building volume resiliency at the same time that we're getting that pump. So you're kind of doing both at the same time. So. When it says rest is needed, if you have the time, rest is needed. Do a true rest is needed, recover all the way, and then for Kyle, I would say try to get another five. That may not happen even if you rested 10 minutes here. That's okay, but the goal would be obviously to get back to that and see if you can get there as opposed to just doing one or two because you're so blown up. So just keep that in mind. We're going to let them rest until the six-minute mark, and then we'll probably rest even more on the, the last set. So Mike's over here asking. He, he, wrote the, he wrote this piece of the workout, and then he was asking about what it was because we wrote it so long ago. <laughs> How are you feeling today? I feel good. Yeah. You look like you just did a workout. I What'd did. you do? I did a new show. <laughs> <laughs> We're filming. Weeks, right? <laughs> We're last, yeah. Last, no, his is, his is a couple weeks away. Yeah. We're filming two in the same day, obviously, with the same colors. Pop of pump sets. Your arms look great right now. Oh, thanks, man. Your veins popping out. Arms? Well, yeah. Her arms. Perrin, <laughs> Perrin's going to have. She's <laughs> she said, everything hurts. 
All right, 10 seconds. So this set is supinated. So the first set, palms facing away from you. This set, palms facing you. Two, one, and go. You may see um, a deterioration in strict pulling. My strict upper body pulling might be the worst movement that I have. I feel like one set, I can do a huge set of strict pull-ups, and then this two, even if I rest as needed, if it's the same day, I just can't do anymore. And you can see Perrin is struggle, struggling. Yeah, so five reps. I probably would be in the same boat. All right, how many did you get, Kyle? 10, so five and 10. Let's call it the 52. 52 second mark, so they have 22 seconds still. They're gonna do another minus two AMRAP set of knees to elbow, rest 30 seconds, and they're back to the rope. The rope is the focus, just like in the quarterfinal workout, like we've already said, so keep that in mind. Make sure that you're resting as needed in between these sets so you can attack the rope. All right, so five seconds. Three, two, one, and go. Both of them have a really nice tight kip. Kyle's is a little bit longer, and I actually think that that helps you with doing more reps. But the problem is the grip fatigue. When you really open up your kip like this, and if you could zoom in on, your, on his hands, you probably can't, but there's a lot of movement in the hands when you have a longer kip, and that just causes a ton of grip fatigue. So that's something to think about if you are doing a workout where you're going from a, let's say, a gymnastics movement like a chest to bar or a toe to bar into something else. Tightening your kip a little bit for those, if it's not a ton of reps, makes sense because then you're not moving your hands as much or just practice not moving your hand as much. A lot of people start doing this back and forth in the bar and they're kind of sliding and that causes more and more tension as you go. And again, that's gonna fatigue your grip faster than anything else. What's the, what's the time, 10 seconds? All right, I'm gonna call this out for them again. Five, three, two, one, and go. So a minute of rope climbs. Kyle got five on his first set. Perrin, she got four on her first set. That first one for Kyle was really fast. That was six and a half seconds for one rope climb. So really, really good split. Second one still looks good. His jump up helps a ton. And then the way that he's driving his knees up also helps. I, you know, I think one of the, per the people that does this the best is Rich Froning. Anybody that has seen him, he's basically parallel to the ground. His back is parallel to the ground when he's hooking. So he can get his feet up almost as high as his head. And if you think it, about it, if you can get your feet up to your head, then you, once you stand up, you're already over halfway up the rope. So maybe it's only one or two total pulls, uh, assuming that you're tall enough to do that. But that makes a huge difference than, like you can see Perrin now, she's having to do three or four pulls up the rope, more time under tension, and overall fatigue. So keep that in mind. Eight seconds, five, three, two, and one. Numbers, 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 numbers. I think that was five again. I'm pretty we sure. got three. All right, so five and three. So Kyle got five. That, that was his goal. Perrin dropped off by one, but that's better than I thought because you said you heard. Do you feel the same? I actually, I feel like my arms recovered after the super needed pull-ups. I only did five, but then I got 13 knees to elbows and I had 14 in the previous set. So they actually felt better after I started moving. Are you typically better at supinated pull-ups than pronated? I, I don't know, actually. Yeah. I don't train them very much. I would say I've been mixing them and mine feel better for one set, but my biceps fatigue so quickly because I start like almost doing a, a reverse curl that way. Yeah. My lats are definitely feeling it now. Yeah. No I, grip? Uh, grips for sure, but my, my lats now I'm like feeling really fatigued. I could feel it on the rope climbs even though I was trying to push the pace and I was trying, trying to like lean back as much as possible to get my legs up. Um, I was trying to feel my core though from the, from the knees to elbows. Yeah, so this is almost like the quarterfinal workout where maybe the first set of GHDs, you get the rope climbs and you're a little fatigued, but you can still do the rope climbs. The second set is where I saw most people that made it really start to fatigue on the rope climbs. Like they couldn't get their legs up anymore. And the same thing with the pistols where all of a sudden their hip flexors started cramping up. They couldn't do the pistols fast. Kind of same thing here, right? They, he did, what, how many reps did you do on your first set? Like 20 knees to elbow? And then 16, so he's accumulated now 36 knees to elbow. That's a ton of core work into rope climbs. I would assume this next set, he really feels his core and lats and shoulders and grip and biceps, everything's gonna kind of blow up on this last set. What do you? Mark Sewell, our master's athlete over there. He's about to age up into 55. Um, he's doing, a, I forget the exact workout, but double unders and Dumbbell thrusters, double unders have actually been a tough movement for him that's limited him from being able to advance to um, higher level competitions. So we've been work taking a lot of time working on them. He's been working with Molly from uh, Jump and Rope a lot, so yeah. Yeah, and 
for Masters athletes, for those that either were at the games or watching the Masters workouts, the, the double under workout they had, I think on the last day, almost every Masters athlete over the age of 50, they were tripping on like every three or four double unders in that workout. So it's something that you can really separate yourself. Now to be fair to all the Masters athletes, I don't know why CrossFit did this, but they made them do double unders on the turf field, which was absolutely, I'll just go ahead and say it, absolutely ridiculous and stupid on CrossFit's part. They should never do that again, but they probably will. So keep that in mind and you should practice it. I actually have had Masters athletes go out to turf fields and practice just so that they can get the field because the rope catches on the turf. But either way, double unders are a huge separator for especially 55 plus, but I think anywhere even maybe 45 and 50, 50 to 54 age groups, there's a big difference there for those that can do those that just have natural bounding, good bounding mechanics and those that are like swinging their arms all around. Mark's doing a pretty good job. His already looked better than the last time. He was here for the age group qualifier uh, and he, I saw him do some double unders then, and uh, these look much, much cleaner than before. So he's aging up. 55 is a great time to be able to try to qualify for the games because anytime you age up, we've talked about this in a master's podcast. I did one with Adam. It's a, it's a really good opportunity to be able to be as competitive as possible, being the youngest in your age group. Yeah. All right, my friends, what time are we going? We're going to go at 13. 13. All right, they're going to go at 13. Last set. Choose whatever way. Yeah, so mixed grip, you can choose which hand you want. Yeah, if you can do it with, while he, Kyle asked, can you switch grip in between? If you can keep your pull-ups unbroken, you can switch. I would love to see how that's gonna work out. So they're gonna start at the 13 minute mark. How long, when did you stop the last set? Just so people get an idea how long the rest was. Yeah, nine something. So a three minute rest, I, honestly, I would say if you have time, do four or five minutes rest between this and really focus on the skill of each movement, especially the rope climbs. Uh, but if you're in a hurry, I, I get that. Most of my workouts I'm keeping on a two minute clock or a three minute clock. But if you have serious performance goals, it really is all about making sure that you're getting the most out of each workout and quality over quantity. All right, so three, two, one. Mixed grip, AMRAP, unbroken pull-ups, rest 30 seconds, and an AMRAP minus two knees to elbow, rest 30 seconds into 60 second AMRAP of rope climbs. Oh, he does it, although he stopped, I don't know. I, we, yeah, we may have to give you a no rep there. <laughs> Only kidding. All right, how many reps did you get, Kyle? Uh, five, five, and then how many, el how many more? Two, seven? Perrin? Nine. Nine? Uh-oh, she's rubbing her arms. She can feel it. Our bi different biceps are blown up. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. why? Cause I, I think a lot of it's what arm you have on top on the rope yeah. climbs. Yeah, that is very true. I always bring my right arm up first. And that makes sense because my right arm usually blows up first. Are you right or left arm when you go up? Usually right, but I'm Sw switch. Yeah, I think people that are like just cognizant of where they're at in the sport should practice both hands on top. <laughs> the same thing, like where do you start with your double unders? Usually somebody leans to one side or pistols, they always start on their right side or burpees, they always st step up with their right side. Switch and be, you know, maybe a little bit more athletic that way. I think just for health and wellness, that makes sense. Maybe speed, it doesn't make sense. I, but with something that's as, yes, Chris is asking me a question. What's the difference between knees to elbow and toes to bar, Chris asks. A knees to elbow and knees are quite literally touching the elbow. These are actually harder if you do the full standard, I think. And a toe to bar is both toes touch the bar at the same time and they must come behind the vertical plane. I think everyone that's in the program knows that, but if you're new to it and you've never done a knees to elbow, make sure that you're still getting your feet behind this vertical plane. So if this is the vertical plane that I'm holding onto with the barbell or the pull-up bar, my feet are coming behind and then my knees are touching my elbows at the top and truly touching the elbow as opposed to like armpit or something else. What time are we starting? All right, and go. So they go from 1452 to 1552. Kyle's, uh, that was still six second uh, for one rep. That's really, really good. Fast transition. That's awesome. His rope climbs, I mean, they're, they're super solid right now. You can see Perrin's upper body pulling is fatigued quite a bit. And even like getting her knees up, it, it's just tough. After you have some core fatigue, you're, you're, you, we've pre-fatigued basically everything in the body, the upper body and the core, the things that you're using for the rope climb. So this is gonna be a tough workout. You can see Kyle's lats are starting to go a little bit and maybe even his grip. Uh, that one, he had to kind of reset his grip at the top. So about 20 seconds left. Kyle, I think, has done three. Perrin, either two or three. I wasn't counting. All right, another good rep for Kyle. That's four. So if he can get one more. Let's go, Kyle. Jump back up there. All right, really awesome job. Five seconds. Three, 
two, one. <laughs> Ay, really solid. All right, my friends. How many did you get on that last set? Three, I think. Three. Awesome job. I four, four, four plus. I think, it was, one. Oh, I think I was an inch away from six. Oh, inch away from six. I thought he was on his fifth one wrong. at a time. But really awesome. What, what would your points of performance be for someone that's going to do this workout next week? Um, oh, shit, I don't know. I'll give it a second. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I went really like hard on the first one, and I almost recovered on the second, so I just couldn't go. Um, I agree with you. Like I would try to rest more between if you actually want to maximize how many reps you get. Yeah. So rest as much as you can. Again, for those that are busy, I know it's hard to rest. You know, maybe five or six minutes, but if you can do that. And then I think another thing is, I know you guys warmed up well, but make sure you warm up really well and almost get like a pump, a little, a little bit of a pump before you start, especially in your grip, uh, your lats, your biceps, so that you don't get that on the first set. Because once you get on the first set, it's hard to kind of clear before your second set. Yeah. All right, anything? Um, uh, so almost slightly conservative on your row climbs just because it adds up so much. So if, like, if you can almost like do like negative splits and start slow and then build up, I felt like I still had speed at the end to try to push the pace. Um, it worked out well for me. I really like that he, both of them picked a target. So Kyle said, I want to get five every single round. He was able to keep five every single round. I think if you pick a target, try to stick to that on each set. And then in the last one, if you have some juice left, then maybe get an extra rep. That's this week's news show. And we're going to finish with a little song from Mike McGee. What do tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snooze? Do what they do they dream of? of? Mall and zebras, a Halle Berry and a Catwoman suit. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show.